Hey guys, welcome to today's class. Have fun. Hello, welcome to class today. So today we're talking about motion under gravity and projectile motion. So this is a continuation of the previous class, which we discussed on motion. You know, there are various modes or various types of motion. So today we'll be considering motion under gravity and projectile motion. These are two types of motion which involves the effect of gravity on the object which is moving. So when we're talking about motion under gravity now, this is defined as the movement against the influence of the Earth's gravitational field. So when you're talking about motion under gravity, you're talking about any form of motion which is against the Earth's gravitational field. In subsequent classes, when we are discussing movements of objects, discussed discussed about friction, discussed forces, types of contact forces we have, the types of forces we have, contact force, non-contact force. I was able to tell us that a type of non-contact force is gravitational force. And we discuss contact forces which are friction, forces of pull and push. But now when you're talking about motion under gravity, gravity is a non-contact force, which is a force which acts of on every object on the earth. So in subsequent classes, when we're talking about motion, velocity, time graph, and all, these are movements in the horizontal. They are movements in the horizontal direction. Movements to and fro. These are movements in the horizontal axis. We have the y axis. So these are movements in the x axis, horizontal direction. Movements in the horizontal direction are not under the effect of gravity to a certain extent. But when we consider movements in the vertical direction, then we are dealing with gravity. Gravity at its full. So that's what we mean by motion under gravity here. Movement against the influence of the Earth's gravitational force. Now these movements can be characterized into two. We can have vertical motion, we can have horizontal motion. We're talking about vertical motion now. Uh, horizontal motion now. Like I said earlier, in horizontal motion, you just have movement in the horizontal plane, which is the x axis. Gravity is most times negligible. But when we're talking about vertical motion, it's a motion in the y axis. So at this point in time, we have the effect of gravity, which can be expressed on any body. So we have upward vertical motion we also have downward vertical motion now in any of these cases you are going to experience the forces of gravity so this is all a form of motion whether it is horizontal whether it is vertical they all have forces which causes or which affects the movement of these bodies in motion so okay the same way we have equations of motion when the body is not under gravity, that is in horizontal movement. And then we have for motion when we have V equals to U plus AC, S equals to UC plus half AC square, V square equals to U square plus 2AS. And these are motions and equations of motion when an object is not under gravity and you can see in these cases now when we refer to acceleration 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 we are talking about horizontal acceleration acceleration which we can calculate due to the motion of the object but when we are talking about motion under gravity now you can see there is a similarity in the equations of motion here. We have V equals to U plus or minus GT. I will explain why we have plus or minus. We have this and we have this, which is similar 
to the equation equation of motion when not under gravity now the only difference between these two equations of motion is the acceleration so in equations of motion not under gravity we have our acceleration a whereas when we are dealing with motions under gravity we replace our acceleration with g now that g which you decided to replace with is what we refer to as acceleration due to gravity so this is what we refer to as the acceleration due to gravity so we replace it with a to form the equations of motion under gravity so these are similar equations which we should not put and I should not mistake them for each other. You should understand just the basic difference between them. So also now, so because we have replaced the acceleration with acceleration due to gravity now, now we have to take into consideration some actions. I'll be able to establish in the first instance that we have upward motion. We have a ball. We have another ball in this case now we have a ball which is thrown upwards we have a ball which is thrown downwards let's say from the top of the house now and this we have thrown the object upward so for downward motion the acceleration due to gravity is positive so when we are considering downward motion because acceleration due to gravity acts on every object on the face of the earth this is the earth acceleration due to gravity acts on every object on the surface of the earth so if any motion is occurring in the direction of acceleration due to gravity which is downward motion the acceleration due to gravity is always positive positive g whereas where we have upward motion it is negative g so any motion negative to the direction of the acceleration due to gravity is negative so in this case we have minus g in this case we have plus g so also we have the initial velocity from a height is always zero the initial velocity from a height is usually zero what does this mean you have and you have a man standing on the top of the house holding a ball so this man standing on the top of the house is as at a particular height each from the ground surface so here yeah, it's the same as the initial velocity from that height is zero so the initial velocity u which the object intends to have at the start of the motion is always zero the initial velocity of the object before it begins to move downward is zero so and the final velocity when an object moves upward is zero another instance now now we are holding a ball also and you want to toss the ball upward let's say to a certain height so this is the highest the ball can reach now the initial velocity with which this man throws this ball upward also is zero but now there's a simple difference when an object is coming down from a particular height its initial velocity is zero but when an object is going upwards from a particular ground level initial velocity is also zero then the final statement is the height zero at ground level 
and also fire velocity when object moves upward is zero. So mm -hmm. this object started with an initial velocity. So let's say 50 meter per second. Velocity with which you move the object upward 15 meter per second. By the time the object moves forward and gets to the particular height where it can't come down, where it can't go up again, you notice that the object which is here it begins to come down back again. Why? It's due to gravity. So the point in which the object reaches that it can no longer go upwards, at that point it has a final velocity of 0 meter per second. So I'll be able to correct it. So the initial velocity from the height is 0 and the final velocity when an object moves upward is 0. So the height is 0 at ground level. Of course, an object starting from the ground level it has no height. It is a, it's only when it has moved upward that you can say it has a particular height. So we have I've been able to establish the three equations. We also have two other equations which we'll be making use of, which is height and the distance. Height and distance. Of course, we are talking about upward movement, downward movement, throwing of object upwards, throwing them downwards. Throwing train objects upwards definitely you are going to have the height which the object attains and when you are throwing objects downwards of course the objects cannot go at a hundred percent vertically downwards it will move see this is that point where you throw the object down the object might land at this point because of gravity effect so this distance here is s while the distance here is what we refer to as h. So these are the five equations we'll be making use of one, two, three. The height, which is half gt squared, and the distance, which is average velocity times time. And this equation, these two other equations are derived from this. For this, which is half gt squared, when an object is moving downwards or upwards, its initial acceleration is usually zero like i said earlier it's zero initial velocity from the height is zero so if the initial velocity from particular heights u is zero this automatically becomes zero so we are left with s also half gt squared but since we are talking about heights now we replace this s with height and this becomes h equals to half gt squared and also distance is the average velocity times time the distance moved by the body in the horizontal direction is the average velocity multiplied by time. In this case, we don't have acceleration due to gravity. When it becomes horizontal motion, we don't have acceleration due to gravity, which I, I was able to explain here. When it becomes horizontal motion, g is zero. When we are talking about vertical motion, we deal with acceleration due to gravity. So we'll quickly be looking at some examples now. The first example we should be looking at it says a ball is thrown vertically upward. A ball thrown vertically upward reaches a maximum height at 50, at 50 meter above the level of production. Calculate the time taken to reach the height and the speed of the throw. Then we have another example here. So solving the first one now, huh? you have to interpret the question. So it says a ball thrown vertically upwards this is the ground level and this is the ball which is a maximum height at 50 meter the maximum height traveled by this ball is 50 meter so it has to calculate the time taken to reach the height and the speed of the throw okay now for this ball to begin its initial movement upward, it started with an initial velocity u 0 meter per second. You can remember the object started from ground level with an initial velocity 0. It uses a certain velocity v, which is the speed of the throw, which we are going to calculate. It gets to this height 50 meter before the object can begin to come back downwards. So we have the height h is 15 meter 
then you have to find the time taken to reach this height 15 meter so using any equation of the motion we have we have s equals to u t plus or minus half g t squared now since our initial velocity is zero automatically zero multiplied by anything is zero so we eliminate this and since we want to, we are we are giving the height now which is vertical distance now replace s with h and we are left with half g c squared so we are talking about vertical movements in vertical movements we are talking about movements against the gravity so in this case i actually find c so all we just need to do is just to do change of subject or formula so we have 2h equals to gt square gt square equals to 2h over g we have c equals to okay i've written it already so we just divide both sides by g then to take to have t just take the square root so this gives us 2 times h which is 50 <coughs> a solution due to gravity which is 10 so this gives us 100 over 10 this gives us 3.162 seconds okay so you have to find also the speed of the throw the speed of the throw so you have to find v speed of the throw of the object so since you know, can also use an equation of motion also to us we'll using equations of motion but in this case we're not using a because we are not talking about horizontal motion we're talking about vertical motion so to find our v we know our final v, sorry our initial velocity which is zero acceleration due to gravity which is 10 and our found time 3.162 so this gives us 31.62 meter per second okay so to the second example now say so a stone is projected horizontally from the top of a town with a speed of 5 meter per second it lands on the ground level at a horizontal distance of 20 meter from the foot of the tower. Calculate the height of the tower. Okay, so you also have to interpret the question. So it says the stone is projected horizontally from the top of the town. So let's say this is the top of the town. projected horizontally from the, with a speed of 5 meter per second we are told the initial speed with which the stone is coming downward it lands on the ground level at the horizontal distance of 20 meter from the foot of the tower so this stone lands at this point which is s 20 meters and we have to find the height of the tower the height of this tower which is h so also make use of the equations of motion, the five equations which we learnt. So since we have the initial velocity u, we have s. I don't find h. And for us to find h, h is half g c squared. We know our solution to gravity has 10, but we don't know the time taken. But we also know that the Horizontal distance is equal to average velocity times time. Velocity times time gives us the horizontal distance. So we are told it moves with a velocity of 5 meter per second. So that is the average velocity. The time taken, which we don't know. We told it covers the horizontal distance S, which is 20. So from here we can find t equals to 4 seconds. 
then I replace the value of t into this equation. So h becomes half g t square becomes half multiplied by 10 divided by 4 square. This gives us 80 meter. So also quickly looking at projectiles, projectile motions are also similar to the motion under gravity. So projectiles are objects or bodies which are launched into the air and allowed to move on its own freely under gravity. I'm talking about projectiles. These are objects we launch or throw into the air. They move on their own under gravity and come back to the ground level. So you launch an object now. It's an initial velocity zero. It begins to move its a certain velocity u in meter per second it moves when it is being launched then it covers a certain distance and comes to rest the object which is being launched covers a certain height h then begins to travel at an angle over a distance before it comes to rest it travels a distance s Travels of when it is being thrown moves over a distance at an angle which is theta. So, the basic difference between projectiles and the motion under gravity which we talked about in motion under gravity, we are just talking about vertical movements. So, when we're talking about vertical movements now, the angle here is 90 degrees. 90 degrees. So, we are not concerned with the angle because it has right angle. But in this case now, the, in projectiles, the objects move with respect to a particular angle, attains a certain height, we throw a stone now, we throw the stone, the stone moves, then finally the stone comes to rest. And this stone, the movement of the stone has an height, the angle, and distance and also everything which occurred here has a particular time taken in which it occurs definitely so examples of projectiles are what you're saying when you throw javelin when you throw a stone when you shoot an arrow so quickly we'll be looking at the simple equations for solving projectiles so we've talked about equations of motion motions under gravity so this is also a form of motion under gravity now. So the first equation here, which we'll be using is the time taken to reach its maximum height. Now, I want you to have in back of my mind that all the equations here are derived from the equations of motion. All the equations here are derived from the equations of motion. So the first equation, the time taken to reach the maximum height. And the time taken for, time taken for this object to reach this height h is what we refer to as the time taken to reach the maximum height. So this is the formula c is equals to u sin theta over g. U, which is the initial velocity which the object moves, the initial velocity which it moves, the angle sin theta, then acceleration due to gravity. Then we also have the time of flight. Now when we're talking about the time of flight. The object is launched and comes down. For the object to attain this height, the time taken to attain that height, which is time taken. Now the total time of flight for the object to go upwards and come backward, come downward, sorry. This is what we refer to as the total time of flight. So this is the time of flight now. So it's just two multiplied by t. It reaches a particular it's a social time. What time will it take the object to come back? So that is just 2 multiplied by t, 2u sin theta over g, the angle between the horizontal and the vertical, and the solution due to gravity. Also, we have the maximum height. The maximum height traveled by the object. The maximum height is given as u square sin square theta over 2g, the maximum height. And also we have the maximum range. The maximum range is S 
this is the maximum range the total distance covered by the projectile so it's giving us u square sine 2 theta over g then we can have the further simplification the maximum range this is the range and this is the maximum range so when our theta is 45 degree 2 times 45 gives us 90 sine 90 becomes 1 so the maximum range of the projectile is u square over g so quickly we'll be using these equations which i want us to understand very well the time taking the time of flight the maximum heights and the maximum range okay so i have two examples my reference material is essential physics you can check for that to so lay out your hands on questions okay so an object is projected horizontally from the ground with the velocity of 15 meter per second and an angle theta to the vertical if the total time of flight is five seconds what is the value of theta okay <clears throat> so we have to interpret the question right so what we are given so it says the object is projected horizontally from the ground with the velocity of 15 meter per second the object is projected Initial velocity of 50 meter per second from the ground with the velocity and an angle theta to the vertical. If the total time of flight is 5 seconds, what is the value of theta? So the total time of flight for the object to move upwards and come back downward was 5 seconds. So we have to find the value of theta. So using the second equation, which is the time of flight, time of flight is 2u sine theta over g. We are told the total time of flight is capital T. Time taken is small c, total time of flight is capital T. It's 5 seconds. So 2 multiplied by the initial velocity, which is 50, times sine theta we don't know the value of theta acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second squared cross multiply we have 50 50 times 2 we have 100 sine theta so we don't know the value of sine theta divide through by 100 so we have sine theta equals to 5 year 1 so theta is equal to sine inverse of 0 0.5 this gives us 30 degrees so the second example here says a ball is kicked with a velocity of 8 meter per second at an angle 30 degrees to the horizontal calculate the time of flight of the ball so the ball is kicked with an initial velocity of 8 meter per second at an angle 30 degree now we ask calculate the time of flight of the ball so we ask find the total time it takes the object to move upwards and come back so and total time of flight is capital C to use sine theta over g so our total time of flight is 2 times the initial velocity u is 8 sine theta which is 30 degrees acceleration to gravity which is 10 this gives us 16 sine 30 by 10 this gives us 16 sine time multiplied by sine 30 which is 0.5 that thing so our total time of flight 16 multiplied by 0.5 gives us 8 8 divided by 10 gives us 0.8 seconds so i can I'll advise us to further calculate the maximum range of this object 
and also to calculate the maximum height the object to, to travel so for the maximum range you'll be using u square over g so the square of the initial velocity h squared divided by g will give us the maximum range and also the maximum height using u square sine square theta over 2g so we have an angle to do this is just simply saying u square multiplied by sine theta we have a value for u which is 8 8 square multiplied by sine theta which is 0.5 square multiplied by this so i want us to lay our hands on this and thanks for listening today i hope the class was interesting if you have questions please drop them in the comment section or send us an email we would love to help you further see you in the next class Thank you.